The following is a hoop ball presentation. Hello and welcome to the Hoop Ball DFS Today podcast. I am your host, Mike Patra. Uh, it's a very special day because I'm joined today by my good buddy Miles over here. And Miles, we haven't done uh, a show together since one of your first nights, so I'm excited to do this. We're going to be breaking down for you guys tonight. It's going to be Sunday's December 8th show. We recorded this the night before, uh, late on Saturday night. So, um, Miles, how's your night going, brother? Yeah, man, I'm pretty pumped to be here again, you know, back to back. So that's good. And yeah, back on with you. So that's always a fun night. Um, yeah, it's going pretty good. Uh, lineups are doing all right here, but I mean, Matisse Thibault getting hurt in the game did not help my uh, call on that one. So that's a little disappointing. And I, uh, missed the news on, uh, Brogdon being locked out because I was sleeping. So missed Aaron holiday as well. Yeah. You, you got caught slipping, man. Yeah. That happens to the best of us. Uh, you know, you miss the news cause something pops up and you know what, when that happens, it happens. Uh, there's nothing you can do about it. And then that kind of news right there, that's kind of hard. Uh, that's a, that's a big slate breaking news that you kind of had to be on. So that's all right, man. That's why we look forward to the next night. That's, that's, it's all good. And that's why we always say just follow that news. Make sure you're following right up to lock. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to tonight's slate, man. We have, uh, we're going to be talking about eight games tonight. We have a two game early, uh, you know, slate, and then we have the regular six game main slate. But before we jump into anything, I just want to give a quick shout out to our good buddies over at Hawaiian Isles Kona Coffee. Uh, I, Miles, I, I haven't gotten you addicted yet. Uh, so um, my goal is no, to, I know you're not a coffee guy. I think we, we spoke about this, but you will be. Um, yeah, I will be. All right, I, I, you will be, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you to try this because if they, whether you like coffee or not, I guarantee uh, this is one that you will try again. All their blends are absolutely fantastic. Please, guys, go check them out at HawaiianIsles.com, or you can go on Amazon just by searching Hawaiian Isles Kona Coffee, or you can go shoot over at Twitter and send, send them a tweet. Uh, and their tweeting uh, Twitter and their tweeter is at Hi Kona Coffee. It's H I K O N A C O F F E E. So with that being said, now, Miles, we have plenty of games to get to. Let's jump right into this, man. Our first game on the slate is going to be in the, the early two-game slate. It's going to be Denver versus Brooklyn. So it's the Nuggets versus the Nets. This game is going to be taking place in Brooklyn. Start us off. All right, yeah, in this game, I'm liking the Denver side a whole bunch. Um, I mean, in this two-game slate, really the only big center that I'm interested in is Jokic. Um I mean, he had a great game last game against uh, Boston. And, I mean, you guys and uh, you and Andrew called that one. Um, And I was on that, too, because last time he played Boston, he got up and he performed as well. Um, And, you know, hopefully he gets up and goes again. But he has been having that issue where he just is kind of, yep, fumbling down the court. Um, And then the other guys I like on that side, I like Jamal Murray in this one because he's only priced at 6200 and I'd rather pay that price than uh, Spencer Dinway's at 8300 just because uh, guards do struggle against the Nuggets' backcourt. So I'm probably going to be fading the Brooklyn uh, side there quite a bit. Um, And with that said, 6200 I like that. We know what Murray can pop off and do. Um, He did struggle against them last time but i mean he was going against Kyrie irving which you know that takes a lot more energy to uh guard him than i think it will dinwiddie and then i also like will barton at 5600 i mean he has had a few down games here but um you know he's still getting his minutes out there and yeah he's one of those guys he can do a bit of everything you know he's averaging 14 points uh seven boards and three assists so he's uh pretty well priced at 5600 um and then i also like uh for a value play, if you're really trying to find something to like, you know, if you're buying the savings, uh, Monte Morris is one guy there. I think he's only 3,100. And I mean, he does, you know, his minutes fluctuate and his production fluctuates as well, but he can uh, hit that 25, 30 fantasy point upside. And uh, he had 27 fantasy points against them last time. Um, what about you? What are you thinking about uh, the Denver side? So, yeah, I mean, for for me, when I'm looking at Jokic on this slate, it just comes down to one or two things. Are you playing Jokic? Are you playing Trey Young? Um, I mean, at the end of the day, you could most likely be able to get both of them in there. But 
Uh, both these games, I think, have enough of a, of, of a positive matchup or a positive uh, correlation where you're going to want to get some of those mid-tier price guys. So I'm with you. I like Murray's price tag, 6200 It's a great matchup. Um, I think I generally would try to avoid a guy like him and more or less gravitate towards Jokic, but I think I'm going to be looking at playing Trey Young. So getting my exposure to the guys like Murray and Barton are going to be two things I'm looking at as a priority. And I also really like Paul Millsap in this matchup. At only 5K. He played well in the first time, uh, first time these guys played earlier in the season. And I, I, I anticipate this game actually staying relatively close. So when the games stay close, I think that I can look at Millsap. So those are my three main targets. You know, when I'm looking at a guy like Morris or, you know, I mentioned Grant sometimes. So I'm looking at Denver. Um, I'm, I'm mostly doing that in game scripts where this game could get out of hand. So I'm um, not going to knock those guys, but uh, only if I'm really scripting it in that way. And looking at the other side, um, yeah, no, I'm not really uh, too enticed by the, the price of Dinwiddie, especially in this matchup. If it was, you know, any other matchup, I would say, you know, outside of like three or four other teams, I wouldn't mind paying the 8300 That's a little bit priced up. And it seems like everybody on the Brooklyn side is a little bit priced up. Jared Allen at 7200 on DK with Torian Prince going for 66 So it's, all three just seem like they're a little bit too expensive for me, especially in this matchup. If I'm looking at anybody, it's probably just going to be, you know, uh, like a DeAndre Jordan at 57. And even then, I'm not feeling too comfortable. So I, I think you pretty much hit this game nail on the head, man. Um, only think, I think the only guy I mentioned that you didn't was Millsap. And yeah, he's more of a GPP play than, uh, than probably a cash game play anyway. I don't know. Yeah, though. The, you tell uh, me what you think, though. 5K is pretty reasonable. I, I uh, looked at... Uh, Millsap as well, but the thing is, I was like, I mean, I like, I was because like, I'm almost kind of like looking at the stack of this game here. But the thing is, I was like, you can't have those four guys together because the thing is, you know, usually Jokic and uh, Barton and Millsap, they all kind of have a little bit of reliance on uh, rebounds as part of their game there. So I feel like you can't have both Barton and Millsap in the same lineup. I mean, I have done it and it has worked out before, but um, just in this narrative here, I'm thinking I'm either going to go either one. Um, and yeah, like you said though, like. If it's GPP, I probably have a few lines where I have Barton and a few where I have Millsap. Um, but yeah, in cash games, I'm probably going to lean towards Barton. Absolutely, man. Music's my ears. I, I kind of script the same way. There's too much rebounding. You, If you're a GPP player, which I know you are, just like me, uh, we're trying to capture all the upside and the high ceilings that we possibly could. And those guys would all impact each other's ceilings. So good call, man. You ready to move on to the next one? You got anything else for us on that? On the Brooklyn side, yeah, I agree with pretty much everything you said. The only guy I kind of like was like, you know, if for some reason you're needing another forward, Torian Prince was one guy I kind of had a bit of interest in because he's been averaging uh, <clears throat> 32 to 42 fantasy points a game here, and he's just been on a bit of an upward trend. But he's not somebody that I'm going to force into my lineups. It's just, you know, if somehow it falls upon that, I wouldn't mind putting him into a couple lineups. All right, all right. Well, uh, looking at the next game, we have the Atlanta Hawks traveling to Charlotte to take on the Hornets. Uh, which team would you uh, you gravitating a little bit more towards in this kind of matchup? Um, in this matchup, I'm gravitating more towards the um, Atlanta side, just a little bit. What about you? I I think this is a this is the game where I'm going to want to kind of get a little bit more of my exposure to. I think um, I'm probably going to have a few pieces on both sides just because I wanted to you know run it back. I think both teams have a pretty porous defense that. Um, I'm expecting oh, yes. each side to kind of capitalize on, you know, yep. uh, Atlanta kind of speeds things up a little bit. So we're going to see Charlotte uh, get a few more shot attempts in, uh, than they normally would, and uh, as well as a few other, you know, uh, ancillary stats like rebounds and assists. So I think there's a lot of value to be had. There's some news that we're going to be waiting to hear on, so we might as well just get to that, uh, you know, right now. First of all, DeAndre Hunter is going to be doubtful. Um, I would, you know, with that uh, right finger dislocation. So I would, I would expect him more or less to sit with just that news. And then we also have Devonte Graham being questionable right now, and uh, he's dealing with a left shoulder contusion, and that's the big news that we really want to find out on because uh, that's going to impact this Charlotte Hornets side dramatically. Um, ever since being inserted in that starting lineup, he's garnered a massive usage, um, and we're going to have to see that kind of get distributed amongst the starters, and also who's going to be the ball handler behind Terry Rozier. So. Uh, which team did you want to start talking about first, brother? Uh, I'll go with the Atlanta side here. So obviously, like you had mentioned uh, earlier there, Trey Young is pretty much going to be owned in you know 75% of the lineups here. Um, he's just been shooting lights out. Um, you know, he, In the last 30 days, he's had six games with 60 fantasy points. He's averaging 50 fantasy points on the season. Um, and I mean... He's going against, like we mentioned, the fourth worst defense in the league right now. So there's no reason you can't hit that 5x, 6x value. 
Um, the other guy on the Atlanta side that I was looking at here, I mean, there's a few, um, but the Jabari Parker there, I mean, he's been priced down a bunch. He has been underperforming, but his minutes are still there. And, and like we had just said, he's going against one of the worst defenses here. So I feel like, you know, I think he he went all out on that uh, Milwaukee game where he just put up 65 fantasy points, and I feel like he just ran out a bit of a steam. So hopefully, you know, he's feeling rested here, and he'll come out and he'll put up some decent numbers. Um, and then if DeAndre Hunter is ruled out, then that's opening up a bit of, like, mid-tier value here with uh, DeAndre Bembry or Cam Reddish. I mean, Cam Reddish went out there last time with the start and, you know, absolutely crushed it. Um you know, can you do that in back to back outings? I'm not sure, um, but he's one of the guys I was uh, looking at there. Then the one other guy I had in this area was if you're like if you're going to be fading Jokic or not using him, one of the centers there I'm looking at possibly is that uh, Damian Jones. It seems like over the last two games he's kind of taken over that center position. Um, you know, and his field goal percentage has been amazing. I mean, last time out he was eight for eight, um, but that's also not a one that I'm going to be betting my house on. <laughs> I, I I agree with that. I mean, he's he's that he does look a lot better. Uh, the field goal percentage has been up there, eight for eight, six for eight. The game before that, um, yeah, man. I mean, uh, I'm going to be playing a ton of Trey Young. Looking at the Atlanta side, I think I'd rather you know I mentioned it earlier. I'll be on more Trey Young than Jokic. I think a lot of other people may be gravitating the other way just because it's the center going against the Nets, and I'm not going to knock them for that. At the end of the day, um, there was it's a fantastic matchup for him. Uh, but I'm going to try to get a little contrarian action this way. Uh, Parker, yes, I do think he's underpriced. Um, it's tough, though. I mean, he's been a little bit up and down. So in, in GPPs, yeah, sure, go for it. Not going to knock you. Um, probably have a fair ownership and cash. You might want to go a different way. Um, and, you know, looking at the Reddish and Bembry, um, you're really going to have to take a stance on this. I mean, yes, in GPPs, you can go and flip-flop them here and there. But when you're really building a ton of lineups, you're not going to want to have to take a 50-50 stance on these guys. And when push comes to shove, um, I- I'm leaning more towards Bembry. I don't, I don't know about you. I've always been, I'm always a Bembry guy. I like the way that he could rack up the counting stats. Uh, Reddish came out and played great last game. And I mean, Bembry would have had a good game too with four rebounds, four assists, two blocks. And, but he shot one of nine for the field, 0 for 5 from three-pointer. Um, that's happened two out of the past three games. And that's kind of what's keeping this price tag down because the minutes have been there for him. And, you know, this is a fantastic matchup. So uh, both those guys in play, I'm leaning a little bit more towards Bambri. I don't know if I'll get to Damian Jones, but I completely see why you're playing it. And I guess if you're not playing, you know, one of those centers in the first game, um, you know, he's probably going to be your best option. Let's be real. I mean, I'm, I'm not really trusting the other side. We'll get to them in a minute. Uh, but I, I kind of agree, man. I think we have a very similar take on this game. Yeah, it sounded like it. Yeah, and that on the other side of the ball, there it's just been split city with the front court, so it's it's hard to really you know decide who you want to be putting in for there for that side. All right. So, well, besides the front court, uh, you know, with the with the news of Devontae Graham being questionable, how are you looking at this game if he's ruled out? Oh, same like you said. If if he's ruled out, Terry Rozier is going to just have a massive usage, and he's going to be more of a plug and play at that point. Um, so I'll be yeah. If that he's ruled out, he'll be one of the guys I'm going to. Um, and then, yeah, for the front court, the one guy that I did kind of have a bit of interest in is PJ Washington at 5,200. Um, you know, he's been earning more minutes over the last uh, five games here. Uh, four of those, I think he is hitting the 30 minute mark and up. Um, you know, and he can go off for like, you know, 30, 40 fantasy points, but, you know, that's not all the time. He's usually more around that 25 to 30 mark. But um, on the front court right now, he seems to be one of the more, you know, reliable guys, in the, I mean, at a minute standpoint. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much my take on that side. What about you? Um, I mean, yeah, I'll be all over Rozier. I'm going to be playing Rozier either way, whether, uh, Graham plays or not. I'm not going to be touching Graham at 9k. It's a fantastic matchup if he plays. I just, I didn't, I wasn't playing him when he was, you know, 7,600. Uh, so I don't think I'm going to yeah. be playing when he was 9k. Um, but the other guy I'm really looking at on this side of the ball is also going to be Nick Batum. Uh, you know, he's back. He's playing decent minutes, played 33 minutes in the last game. Um, knowing that Devontae Graham, if he sits, uh, we'll be seeing plenty of Batum, whether it's in the starting lineup or if it's as one of the primary backup ball handlers. Um, so I'll definitely have a bunch of interest for him. He's going to be one of my favorite value plays on this two-game slate at 3,800. So those two guys would be my two primary options, and then I think I'll look at P.J. Washington as one of my secondary options as well. 
Um, and then maybe a shot at Bridges and GPPs, but the other three are, uh, I think, better options than those guys. So that's all I really got for us uh, on that side. But I think, you know, with the little bit that we ran through, we kind of, you know, have enough to build some shell lineups even without the news. Yeah, I agree. All right, man. Well, that's it. That's all we got for the two-game slate. So we're going to be moving on to the main slate. Um, like we said, the main game, uh, main slate, six games. So this is this is going to be a fun one, though, man. I'm, I'm kind of excited about this. Um, so we're just going to jump right into it. Um, I don't know. Do you have uh, any any preference on uh, which on the way? On Chicago-Miami one? Yeah, which way you'd like to start I... this? I, I like the Miami side a whole lot more. I don't even have a. I actually didn't. I didn't list a single Chicago guy. Awesome, perfect. Take us away. <laughs> Miami <All> it is. <laughs> yeah. All right. So yeah, you know Jimmy Butler, eighty eight hundred. Um, he's been going ballistic the last uh, you know three games here, and two of those he had a triple double. Um, and I mean he's just been solid all season. I mean his floor is pretty much you know thirty five that forty mark there. Um, and the thing is, there's just a ton of guys that are on that side that might be ruled out too. So. I mean, he's going to be heavily leaned on if they are. And, I mean, that's also opening up a bunch of value if those other guys are ruled out. And uh, those guys that are ruled out possibly might be Bam Adebayo. Um, Winslow is questionable. Drogic has already been ruled out. Um, so with if Bam is ruled out, I'm looking at Myers Leonard at 3 for 100. Um, you know, so with him out, he can get, you know, 25 to 30 minutes. And if he gets those minutes, he can easily hit value. Um, the other guy I'm looking at is Kendrick Nunn. If Winslow is out, with Winslow, Dragic, and I mean, if Bam is out too, he's going to be pretty much the second facilitator behind Butler. And I mean, when he was uh, at the start of the season there, when Butler is out and Winslow is out, he was, uh, you know, having great games because, yeah, he had the ball in his hand a lot more and he was uh, making some good assists. So those are the guys I'm looking on the Miami side. Um, and yeah, like I said, I looked at the Chicago side a bit, but I just, I don't know, there was no way there. They just really jumping out to me, so I was like, I'm gonna look at the later games to, you know, get some more uh, exposure there. Hey, I don't, I'm not knocking you. I mean, looking at the at the Miami side, I'm with you. I mean, a lot of the news we're gonna have to wait on. It's gonna really dictate. Yeah. Um, but I I was kind of talking about this on the last show where you know they were with where we had all these same similar injuries. They're playing. Uh, I can't remember who they were playing in this last game. Fantastic match. I think it was Washington. Yeah, they played Washington in the last one. Um, and with all these guys out, it was just a dream matchup on paper for Kendrick Nunn and Tyler Hero. I think you can look at both those guys again. And that's kind of my approach, I think, for this game. Uh, if this game was in Chicago, I'd be all over Jimmy Butler. 8 a is more than a fair price tag, except for, especially for the way he's been playing as of late. But I think if we see that, you know, with Dragic out, if Winslow's also out, um, all that usage that is going to go around on the for those two guards between Hero and Nunn at their price tags is going to be a nice little medium price I could pay to get some of that value. And then if Bam's out, I'm going to be looking at Olenek and Leonard. Um, I'd prefer Olenek, but Leonard's only 3,400. He'll definitely see a nice extra, like, probably like 10 or 15 minutes, um, and both will be rock solid options. So I think uh, that's that's kind of my take with the Miami side. You know, play Butler if you want, but uh, I I'd, I'd probably rather just get a one-off of one of those cheaper ancillary pieces. Yeah, no, I don't knock you for that call because, yeah, like I looked at all those guys. This is that one I was looking at them. Kendrick Nome was the one that I was like, yeah, that's the guy I'd want. All good plays, man, all good plays. Um, all right, Chicago, with you, though. Uh, not interested in anything on here. Uh, the, you know, the one stab at Zach Levine here and there in, t in tournaments and GPPs if you really feel like it. But 7900 it's a fair price tag. It's a tough matchup. We don't really need to go there, so... Ready to move yep. on if you are. I am. All right, next game, we have the Los Angeles Clippers going against the Washington Wizards. This game's going to be taking place in Washington. Uh, should be, uh, I don't know. I don't want to say it's a blowout. I mean, we just kind of seen the Clippers get mopped last, last yep. time. Uh, I, get, I, get, I mean, it was Milwaukee, let's, with that being said, but... You know that they got a little exposed. Uh, they got they showed a little rust, like uh, you know, kind of some of those early big three Heat days uh, that first season when it was Bosh, Wade, and LeBron, and they had some struggles. So this team's gonna take a little while. They're gonna have to start playing alongside each other. We heard a uh, little rumblings going on in the media saying how they're gonna be looking to play both guys on nights where they're uh, playing bad teams, just so that they can get used to playing each other a little bit better. So. Uh, that, that's, that looks like that's what we're getting tonight. So, uh, you know, Kawhi's playing, Paul George is playing. So uh, start us off, Miles. Uh, which team would you like to hit off, Clippers or the Wizards first? I will start off on the Clippers side. 
Um, so, yeah, looking at the three big guys here, Beal, um, Kawhi, and Paul George, I'm liking Paul George's price tag at 7800 Um, I mean, in their last meeting here, they all kind of performed around the same mark. Um, Paul George is being beat out by three fantasy points by the both of those guys. Um, and then the other guy that I'm really liking in this uh, side is Montrez Harrell. I mean, at 6300 I feel like he's almost like a lock and load. He massed 23 points, 15 boards, and a block and a steal against him last time for uh, 48 fantasy points. Um, and like uh, Andrew had said the other night, he's just been balling out. So uh, I would, yeah, it'd be hard to fade him in this one. The one other guy I have for value play here, um, if Patrick Patterson and Jermichael Green are both ruled out, um, Mo Harkless at 3,100, if he gets that 30-minute uh, mark, he'll, uh, you know, he'll get you around that 20, 25 uh, mark. And, I mean, that's hitting value for that price. And if you want, you know, if you're, like I said, if you're – just trying to get some more uh, stars in there. Three one hundred, pretty good, good deal on that. Um, and that is pretty much all I have on the Clippers side. What about you? Uh, to be honest, I, as much as I like this game, uh, I'm a little worried about it, and I think a lot of people would be. But you know, talking about it, I do like the Harrow call. I just think that he'll have plenty of opportunity to see good court time. Um, I think Zubak might be limited in this, especially with Thomas Bryant being ruled out and them kind of going with two center options between, you know, Rui, uh, Bertans, and Wagner. All those guys could kind of stretch the floor a little bit. That might give Zubak a problem. Um, Harrell's a little bit of a smaller guy. I think he'll have a better time chasing him out around the three-point line. So uh, I, I do like Harrell. I think Beverly is actually a very good option right here at 4500 um, I'll definitely have some shares in Beverly in this. I've uh, been playing – Fairly well as of late, you know, just kind of looking at the box scores. We're still waiting for one of those big blow-up games. He's about due, and this is the type of matchup that I like to target those in. Um, just given the slate and the other options that we're going to have later on, I don't know if I'm going to want to be investing in Paul George and Kawhi Leonard too much. I think if I'm looking at either one of those guys, I'm going to be running it back on the other side with Beal and just hope that this game stays close enough for them all to matter. Yeah, I mean, last time I think it was a blow, and they still all seem to get their minutes there, so... Um... Well, let's see, what was it? There was just a few games ago. Yeah, the score was uh, 125 to 150. So pretty much that was a blow. But yeah, the minutes were still all there for most of them. So um, I think maybe Kawhi and uh, Paul had a little less minutes. Yeah, so yeah, okay. Kawhi only had 26, and I think Paul had 28. So they were a little bit less down, but I mean, still, it's almost 30 minutes. And they're not really usually going much over that mark, actually, because they're trying to keep them healthy. Absolutely. That's a good call. I like it. Uh, anything else on the Washington side that you're looking at? Uh, the one guy I'm looking at on that side is uh, Ish Smith. I mean, I know he's getting Pat uh, Beverly's defense, but uh, at 5,000, I think there's still plenty of uh, juice left on that bone. So he's one of the guys I'm uh, looking at. What about you? Uh, I think he's still he's still an option. I'm definitely a little less interested in him with the little price bump than, you know, given the Patrick Beverly defense. And at this point, everybody else is kind of figuring out the whole the Ish, Ish Smith thing. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm definitely a little less interested in him, but still in play for me, uh, just knowing that Thomas and McCray are both out, he's going to be forced into a 30-plus minute role. Um, and then I think I'm going to be targeting uh, Rui. I, I like targeting centers going against the Clippers. I kind of think that's that one crack in their armor. Um, and Rui's been playing well ever since kind of sliding over to center. He's, taken a, he's been taking more shot attempts. Uh, the, you know, the lowest shot attempts he has in the past five games is 12. Uh, upwards of 23 and 18 in there as well. So um, I think those would be my two primary targets. And if you want to play Bertans, he's getting up there a little bit. I'm not going to knock you for it, though. The guy's just been lights out from three, man. He's just shooting th 13 shots from deep in the last game. That's just unheard of. So uh, yeah. I'm not going to knock you for that play, but he'd probably be one of my lesser favorite options on that side of the ball. Yeah, no, I like that. I did look at Rui myself, and I was considering him since he's been averaging 40 minutes a game. So, I mean, all the opportunity is there. Yeah. Um, I just was a little bit – I mean, I guess he was 57 hurt last game, but, yeah, he's just priced up a bit more. And, yeah, I've been going to Davis Bertans a whole bunch when he wasn't priced up, and now that he's at that 67 hurt mark, I'm a little less um, on board with that. All right, man. Or 6,400, sorry. <laughs> no, no worries, no worries. Uh, we're moving on to the next one. We have the Toronto Raptors going against the Philadelphia 76ers. So uh, this game's uh, going to be a good one, man. Uh, I, you know, another rematch yep. of our uh, oh, Eastern yeah. Eastern Conference. So uh, I'm 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 looking forward to this, man. It's it's one that we know what's what should be happening at this point. I mean, Joel Embiid sat out today's game or tonight's game, yep. dude. Oh, yeah. You know, just to get a little bit of a breast. They said bruised left hip, but I mean, it's it's a back-to-back -back game, so it was more or less. 
uh, a rest type situation. So he should be back, but you know we, I think we have to monitor it. And I wouldn't expect Al Horford to sit given the the gravity of the game against Toronto. But it is back to back where they sat and beat on the front half. So we've seen in the past on the set, on the back half they've uh, rested Horford. So keep an eye on that news. But we'll just kind of tackle this game with uh, him, you know, being ruled in, I guess. And we kind of know what to do if he's rolled out. They just shift everything up. Tobias Harris slides up to the floor. Um, we know Matisse won't probably get any minutes, knowing that he got hurt tonight. So we'd see probably a couple yeah. more go to Mike Scott and Cork Moss instead. So maybe even a bit of Trey Burke. He put up some big numbers tonight. Yeah, you're right. He's a little lightning in the bottle. I, he's one guy I try to not chase. Whenever I feel like yeah. there's two, there's two guys that in the past few years they burn you, and it's it's Chalk Trey Burke and uh, Chalk uh, Kylo Quinn. Those two guys will burn you on the chalk nights. You got to play them in the most random hit or miss nights, and those are the ones that they'll explode on. Um, I, I struggle to get those guys right a lot, but uh, I think you know, a lot of people do. <laughs> I I hope so, man. Because if everybody else knows the secret and I don't, I'm in trouble. <laughs> all right, man. Uh, who are you looking at on the Toronto side of the ball? We'll start with them. All right. So, yeah, on the Toronto side of the ball, I actually have quite a bit of interest here. Um, I'm looking at Freddie Van Fleet and Kyle Lowry. I mean, I kind of was at, you know worried when uh, Kyle Lowry came back. I thought I was going to eat into some of uh, uh, Freddie's uh, usage here. But I think with uh, Lowry back, it's kind of you know taking some uh, load and uh, weight off of uh, Fred's uh, shoulders there. And I think, you know, now he's able to play off the ball a bit more. And um, now it's splitting the defense's detention. You know, it's not all just on uh, Van Fleet. So I think that's kind of actually helping him. Um, and I think at 6900 it's, I mean, it's a fair price tag. And uh, Lowry at 7200 is also a decent one. And, I mean, he's been playing good uh, since he's come back minus his one uh, game there of his field goal percentage. But he still hit value with his other uh, complementary stats. Um, and then the other guy I'm looking at in the front court here is, um, I mean, Marc Gasol, last time out, he did great against uh, Embiid, you know, keeping him scoreless. And uh, at 4,600, they just seem to refuse to price him up. And, I mean, he's still getting 25 to 32 minutes, even with Ibaka back. And, you know, he's been hitting around that 20 to 30 fantasy point mark. So I think he's a pretty good value play here, a pretty safe one. Uh, yeah, and that's my take on the... Raptor side, I kind of looked maybe Siakam, but I didn't have a ton of interest there. What about you? I think he's priced like very fairly. I think it's you know it's obviously not the best matchup for him, but I think at the end of the day, it's a competitive game. Um, and he, you know, eighty two hundred, I, I keep him in my player pool. I'm not going to go throwing him in right now, but I'll definitely have a few shares. Um, looking at the the Kyle Lowry Van Vliet, I mean, at this point, they're both priced very similarly. So going into the nights, we have to take a stance on them. Uh, you know. Nine times out of ten, I'll probably be on Van Fleet. I think tonight I will be leaning more towards Lowry, and it's just a little bit of the narrative reason. So it's if you want to play Van Fleet, I don't knock you. Uh, Kyle Lowry played at Villanova uh, while he was in college. He's in Pennsylvania, so he has some friends and family, I'm sure, probably in the Philadelphia area. So I know that when he comes to Philly, there's a little bit more meaning to it, uh, just knowing that he spent some years there when he was younger. So, um, you know, for that reason, I think I would be leading a little bit more Lowry. And I think, like you said, the Gasol call, uh, knowing that he's going to have to play big minutes against Embiid and just knowing that we have that little elevated floor, uh, he's in play at 4,600. Does he have, you know, 40, 50 type or 50 point upside in this matchup? Probably not. Uh, but if you get 30, 35 from a 4,600, you'll take that all day long. Yeah, he's a good cash game play. He's, yeah, he's not like, you know, he's not going to be that GPP value that's going to smash a slave for you. Absolutely. Good call. All right, man. And what are you looking at over there on Philly? So on the Philly side here, like, I mean, if they had price and beat at 8,800 like they did last time, I'd have a lot more interest in him because, I mean, he's going to go out there with a point to prove, right? Going scoreless against him last time, he's not going to take that line down. So I think he's going to go out there, you know, you know, full bore. And like you said, they rested him up, so he's going to have all the energy to go out there and just, you know, throw down a huge game. Um, but with that said, he did struggle last time, but I, I think he's really going to go out there for point to prove. Yeah, I, I'm right on there. I think they go to him early. I think they feed him in the post very early, try to get him going, try to build the confidence in him um, just from that last struggle outside. So that's a good call. Am I going to pay 10 k for him? Probably not, but I'm not going to be shocked to see him you know, have 13 points by the end of the first quarter. Um, I could easily see 13 real-life points, and that number just stands out to me. I don't know why I'm saying 13. It could be 11. <laughs> it could be 14. It could be 12. Uh, but I think it's going to be 13. All right. That's, it, man. <laughs> That's I really don't have any interest on the Philly side. I, 
I mean, if you want to look at the value plays, I guess maybe that might open up uh, if we see, you know, Al Horford sit and Mike Scott all of a sudden is playing some minutes again. But even then, um, I just don't love the matchup. I think they're all priced fairly. I think maybe Tobias Harris at 7,700 would be my main interest. But I don't want to pay 7,400 with uh, for Horford with Embiid back. Yeah, Ben Simmons at 83. I mean, he blew up tonight, but on a back-to-back, I'm not really looking at it. He hit his one three-pointer tonight, so now he's at two three-pointers this season. Um, I'm, I don't know if we'll Obvious. get uh, I don't know if we'll get back-to-back three-pointers from him, and we'll just see a lot of that usage kind of go towards Embiid. Like I said, I expect them to kind of try to involve Embiid pretty early and often throughout this game. So that's kind of my take on that. I'm not really playing too much from the Philly, but I do like some on the uh, Toronto side. Yeah, as they yeah, Simmons is on track to you know hit that three three pointers a year, right? Yeah, right. Uh, he's like, <laughs> listen, I I, I was uh, you know I was gonna I was gonna tweet this out the other day when I saw somebody talking about it and uh, there was a take on it. It's like well, who cares if he shoots threes? And you know what? I, I'm kind of with that take. I honestly don't care if he could. It'd be yeah, great. Listen, if he could add a three point shot to his game, fantastic. But I've been making the same argument for you know Giannis for the past four or five years on you know people are like well he can't shoot threes. Does it matter when you take three dribbles or three steps and you're crossing the half court line and dunking it? It, it? it doesn't. You know, the guy can get to any spot on the court he wants to. He has some of the best court vision in the game. So, you know, great. If you can hit the threes, fantastic. But Ben Simmons is going to be a perfectly fine basketball player, whether you can hit three pointers or not. Oh, yeah, 100%. But yeah, if you could add that three and then he's just going to be deadly. Absolutely, man. So uh, we're half, we're at the halfway point. So before we keep going, just another quick shout out to our guys over at Hawaiian Isles Corner Coffee, the uh, and our, our pride and true sponsor, man. They've been here since day one. So I know you're relatively new over here at Hoopball, but uh, we've been dealing with these guys for several years, and it's it's only because they're absolutely fantastic on the relationship side. They're all, you know, absolutely wonderful. Um, they treat us well. We treat them well. I hope so. At least, uh, you know, I try to give them as much national coverage as I possibly could, even though I'm just walking around screaming it in the streets because I really do love their coffee, guys. It's absolutely fantastic. I drink two to three cups a day minimum. Um, and when I say that, I don't mean standard cups. I mean, like, the biggest cup I can find in my, in my cabinet and then fill it to the top. Uh, about two or three of those. So check them out, guys. You can find them at HawaiianIsles.com or you can go on their Twitter and just give them a tweet at High Kona Coffee. Or you can even just go on Amazon and search Wine Isles Code of Coffee, and it'll pop right up in all the different available forms. So please check them out. And, uh, yeah, so ready to move on, man. We have these Sacramento Kings. I was Kings. just going to oh. say a quick mention on that there is, do they send out little tester packets or anything like that? Because I feel like they should be sending you a whole whack ton because I feel like you'd just be going around just shoving that down people's throat. Oh, listen, man, I, I would. <laughs> I would. Obviously, I'd have to take a couple samples for myself. Uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, you know, I'm a gambling guy, so I'm also a cheap bastard up, up front. So I'll, I'll be playing. Listen, free samples are my favorite thing. I'm the guy that takes all the shampoos and the soaps out of the hotel rooms whenever I leave. Um, I leave for work a lot. I have to travel a lot, so um, I stash all those. Man. I got I got all the shampoos and soaps around. <laughs> Pulling the Ross Geller, I see. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. Yeah. Well, I'm a, I'm uh, I'm a I'm a big friends guy too. <laughs> yeah, I like it a lot too. All right, man. We'll keep going though. I could talk friends for five hours. I don't think people care that much about that show anymore. I mean, uh, Netflix played a billion dollars for it. Probably gets four clicks a day now. But we have the Sacramento Kings traveling to Dallas uh, to take on mining coaches, Dallas Mavericks. So let's start off with the Kings, uh, the away team. What are you liking over there? So, yeah, I took a look at this game here, and I was, uh, I was a little afraid to really – you know, dive too much into it because if Marvin Bagley comes back, that's going to change the whole team composition. Um, and then if that happens too, that's going to get into a bunch of Rashawn Holmes usage. So, I mean, it's going to get into a lot of people's usage, to be honest. Um, so I was kind of very wary on that side. Um, so it's going to be very news dependent. Um, and then the other thing is like, so if, if he's ruled out, then yeah, you know, you can probably take a look at Rashawn Holmes again. He's just been out there destroying. But the other guy too is if, uh, you know, if uh, Bogdan uh, Bogdanovich there, if he's ruled in, I mean, at 4,900, I mean, he's not been playing great. He's been having some issues. So, I mean, I guess that kind of depends if he's healthy or not. But uh, that's a pretty cheap price tag for that guy. Um, otherwise, I'm yeah, I've, I've kind of a loss for this game. Just as I'm, it's more of a game that I'm going to wait and see what happens with uh, the news. Um, what about you? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I uh, touched on the Bogdanovich news. I think he's actually, he's listed as probable right now. So I think we're, 
we're mostly waiting on the Bagley news to find out if he's playing. Uh, he's, I mean, he's been kind of questionable for the past few games now. They don't, you know, they're listing him questionable. They don't really exactly know when he's going to return. Um, it could be this game. It could not be. I'm going to take it as a no um, until they say something else, until they prove me wrong otherwise. Um, but to be honest, it's going to be the main guys. I'm looking at healed. I'm not too interested in Barnes. Bleach is a fair price tag. Um, you know, Dallas is pretty weak in their front court, but you know, I don't I don't really want to go to him in this matchup necessarily with some of the other options we have in the slate. I don't want to pay seventy two hundred for Holmes. Um I think we can take a look at Trevor Ariza at four K if we need a little bit of value. His minutes have been on the rise. Uh whether that's due to, you know, just him them wanting to play him and getting him more involved or it has something to do with Bogdanovich's injury. Um I'm not too sure. Um but it's something worth monitoring just because they have been up. So uh, that's that's pretty much all I really got as far as the Kings. Uh, again, if Joseph sits, he, uh, we didn't mention him at the top. He's questionable. If we see Joseph sits, uh, you can definitely look at Farrell as well at 4,200. Yeah, no, I uh, I like that. All right. Uh, what do you, uh, you know, Dallas, I think it's pretty cut and dry. I, I don't need to give my take too much on them. I think everybody knows it's going to come out of my mouth, but let me hear from you. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much just the one guy on that side that you're looking at, and that's going to be uh, Luka Doncic. Um, I mean, the thing is, like, now he is actually hitting that 11,700 mark. I mean, he obviously, he can hit that value, no problem. Um, it's just that there are quite a few, like, options on the slate that I'm not sure if I want to do that. I mean, he, there are a lot of values, so you could do a lot of the stars and scrubs in this, but... Um, yeah, this is the one time where I'm not just lock and load on Luca. Actually, I'm just yeah. I mean, obviously he's always in play, but what about you, man? I know you're gonna be. I'm all playing him. I'm playing him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, at the end of the day, I try to be as transparent as possible, and I would love to, you know, be a little wishy washy with Luca, um, just because it's 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 very it's a very hard take to to have. I mean, when you're talking about guys like Luca and Harden. You're either on the right side of it every night or you're on the wrong side of it. And if you're on the wrong side of it on those guys, uh, you're going to be paying the price. So I'm going to be on it. I'm going to be paying the 11-7. I always try to mention um, targeting those kind of wings or shooting guards against the Kings. They're very vulnerable to them. Um, Luca, just the usage, what he's been doing all season long, it's just it's amazing. So I'm going to I'm going to keep just riding the gravy train. Um, will I have 100% ownership? No, but I... I'd probably be with the field, if not a little bit more overweight than the field on him. I can I can say that with confidence, and um, that's probably all I'm really looking at on the Dallas side of the ball. I mean, Porzingis is at a fair price tag, 6,800. Um, you know, but at at this point and at this stage, I just like rolling with Doncic every night. I, the only time I really look at Porzingis is if there's a a super positive net matchup, like if it's a, against the Nets or a revenge game or one of those kinds of scenarios. Otherwise, I'm just going with Doncic. Yeah, no, and I uh, don't don't uh, <clears throat> don't disagree with that. Yep, and uh, oh, I forgot to mention, Delon Wright ruled out as well. Um, so that's definitely going to open up some extra guard mi- minutes along the uh, for Brunson and Curry and all those guys. But they have so many options between those two guys and Hardaway and Berea, uh, even Courtney Lee, where they just kind of get divvied up amongst all you know three or four of them. So, so you could take a shot at them in GPPs if you want, but I wouldn't feel too confident in like cash games with any of those value plays. Yeah, no, that sounds good to me. All right, man, we'll keep going. Uh, two games left. OKC, we have the Oklahoma City Thunder traveling to Portland, taking on the Trailblazers. Uh, why don't you start us off with the away team, uh, kick us off with the Thunder. All right, so, yeah, on the Thunder side of the ball there, um, I have I mean, the thing is I just can't, like, I've been, I've been, I've been playing Adams quite a bit because he's been priced down there, and then now he's been, you know, he has been performing, so now he's been priced back up here. And the thing is, both the centers in this game here have both been playing very well. Um, and, I mean, I, I I still like Adams at 6,800. Um, I just don't know if I'm, like, I wasn't, I'm not, I'm not as big on him now because of that price bump, but he's one guy I like there. Um, and then otherwise, on the other side there, I am... I didn't really get to this one too much on my notes here, but yeah, I'm not too big on much on the other side there. Um, uh, you better say my guy, man. I know you listen to these shows. I mention them too much. Or you, well, I, I was going to leave. The, if you're talking about the Portland side with the value with that. Yeah. You know, okay. You know what I'm happened, talking about. <laughs> I, don't know, I, I wasn't even going to touch that because I'm like, Mike's going to be all over that. Oh, I got to leave that guy. Point. 
I can't steal away from you. <laughs> <laughs> I respect it, man. That's my guy. So I, I, I was just talking about Thunder side. Man. Like the Thunder side, I'm just not. Like I said, there's. I mean, Daniel Galarney's been going out there and doing some good stuff, but he's priced up a bunch. Um, and then just the backcourt there hasn't been very consistent. It's been you know hit or miss. Uh, I mean, Chris Paul has been fairly consistent, um, but he's not. You know, he's only had the one game here where he's gone up for like 50 fantasy points just last game. Um, and I don't feel like he's going to go out two games in a row and do that. Uh, I'd rather much go on the other side of the ball if Damian Lillard at 8,500. Um, he still hasn't been really priced up. He's, you know, the guy who should be, I think, more around that mid-nines. What about you? Uh, so looking at the uh, the OKC side, not too much interest in anybody for me, really. If I'm looking at anybody, it'd probably Dennis Schroeder at 6,100. Um, I you know I just like when they get him going off the bench and when they play him minutes off the bench he, he closes the fourth quarter plays 35 36 minutes in close games um, I'm expecting this game to be pretty fairly close I mean both teams are very mediocre at best uh, but both also have a little bit of something that they're trying to prove maybe not Chris Paul but I think the rest of the Thunder are so um, yeah I think I think I look at nice. Schroeder. And Andrew would love that call. <laughs> He's a Schroeder guy. That's yeah. his guy. Oh, I'm, I, I try to target him at the right spots. I wouldn't call myself a Schroeder guy. I've gotten him right a few times this year. I, I love... When he's playing, when they're playing Golden State, I just fire him up at this point. I mean, I love, I love when he's going against Golden State, when he's going against teams like the Pelicans, those kind of matchups. I like to take advantage of him. Um, I think this is one where he definitely does see a little bit of an uptick, though. So he's in play for me. And then obviously on the other side of the ball, Damian Lillard, eighty five hundred, is always in play. Um, that's just too cheap for him. I'm not saying it's absurdly cheap. Uh, he's been performing well for the past two games. So I think we're still seeing a little bit of that price decrease from that slump he was in. That's going to end. It's Damian Lillard. Um, he's a shooter. When shooters are in slump, their numbers are obviously going to be affected. So, uh, you know, just count on him being that kind of bounce back type player, even in your you know season long or drafts and leagues. If 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 he's available for a buy low type situation, if the owner was panicking at one point, that's something that you could definitely capitalize on. Um, and I and think then that window's closing quickly here. Yeah, I mean, we we just got two back to back good games up, you know, from him. So I, I I would expect it's probably already closed if it was ever even open. I mean, at the end of the day, it's not a secret that Damian Lillard's still absolutely phenomenal. It's not like he's thirty seven years old where all of a sudden he's falling off or anything. It's a couple of bad games, um, and then I'm, I'm obviously going to be playing a ton of Kent Bazemore. Uh, that's my boy. I I play him on nights where it's there's no injuries, there's nothing going on, everything else just because. He can get it done in so many different ways, whether it's scoring, rebounds, a couple of assists. He always gets a steal. Um, we see some of those freak games where he sometimes gets between three and five of them, and then all of a sudden we're counting 37 to 40 fantasy points at only 3,800. So he's probably going to be one of my uh, one of my staple value oh, plays on the slate. He's probably the number one value player right now. I mean, the fact that Hud's out for the rest of the season and he's getting this uh, chance to start here, yeah, yeah. I mean, he can't can't be uh, not on that train at 3,800. And it's it's funny because I was just talking about you know season long leagues and how I'm a big Baysmore guy. I'm not a big Baysmore guy in season long leagues, but he's definitely going to be worth owning at this point with Hood out and uh, the general increase in role. But I actually just picked him up earlier in the week because they had those two games back and uh, back to back, and I didn't have full yep. lineups on those, so I streamed him, and uh, you know now I'm owning him. <laughs> so exactly that's how that works sometimes. I got, I guess I got a little lucky and uh, I uh, saw some Swami injury happening. And unfortunately for Rodney Hood and Achilles injury, uh, get right, man. It's just terrible. This guy finally looked like he was kind of starting to solidify himself um, with a with a solid role on the team because he's been bouncing around over the past few years. So yeah, uh, he has. Hopefully he can come back and kind of still still look like himself. But we've seen in the past those Achilles injuries they really sap uh, sap the movement and sap kind of the lift out of some of these guys. We've seen it. Uh, with Wesley Matthews, but he's a little bit older than Hood, so let's hope for a bounce back for him. Yeah, any of those tendon and ligament injuries are bad news, and yeah, it's really unfortunate, man. Yeah, and that's uh, that's pretty much all I got. I mean, uh, Whiteside's played great in this matchup, but his minutes have been limited in the, both the, uh, both the games that they've played earlier in the season. But he performs very well with whatever minutes he does get against this team. So I uh, wouldn't knock him if you wanted to play him at seventy five hundred. Just not a staple must play of mine. I'm, I'm really not touching uh, Baysmore and McCollum. Yeah, no, I uh, yeah, I agree with that. And it's it's simply I don't get McCollum right. That's the only reason why I don't touch him. I don't, <laughs> I'm not saying that don't take. I hope nobody takes that as like he's going to be too bad. No, if I'm saying I'm, he's not, I'm not going to touch him. He's probably going to have a good game. Um, you know, take that with the caveat and everything. But all right, man, you ready to move uh, move on to the last game? It's not really a late game hammer, but it's the last game that we have to talk about tonight. Yep, I'm. Uh, yep, let's move on. 
All right, we have the Minnesota Timberwolves traveling to L.A. to take on the Lakers. This is going to be a popular game. We have a lot of news to kind of monitor question, and look out for. Question yeah. players here. A lot of Q tags, man. So we're going to have some news to keep an eye on, some uh, some a little bit more important, some we kind of already have. Uh, but let's uh, let's hear it, man. Who do you, which team do you want to start with, the away team, or do you want to take the home Lakers? Oh, who do I want to go with? Um, I am going to go with... You know what? You got more notes on this game? I'm going to let you start start us off. All right, let's fire this thing up. I'll start with the uh, – I'll go with the Timberwolves since that's where we got all these questionable tags. So right now Towns is probable. Wiggins is questionable. Teague is questionable. Uh, Teague's dealing with an ankle injury. Uh, looks like he picked it up last game, but he played plenty of minutes. I wouldn't expect that to really hold him back, but it's an ankle injury with Jeff Teague. It's something that's been nagging him and bothering him all season long and has in plenty of years in his career. So that's one that we're going to have to monitor. <clears throat> um, I, I touched on this last time. Um, if Wiggins sits out and Teague plays, I love Teague. I mean, that's he was a lock and load for me once I saw Wiggins was out. I played all of the Teague, and it paid off greatly for me. He absolutely blew up, and it's by no surprise – um, those two, they just impact each other's values so much. They correlate very well together. Teague wanted to move to the bench in order to allow Wiggins to kind of thrive in that point forward role uh, because he was playing well when Teague was out. So he didn't want to touch that. So once once we know one of those guys out of the lineup, we you can kind of you know give a little bump to the other one. Um, so I'm going to kind of wait to hear on both of those guys and you know kind of go off of that. And uh, you know otherwise, <clears throat> I think you know I'm not going to really be playing Towns. Uh, at 10 2, I already mentioned I'm going to be spending up on Luka more going against this Lakers defense. They've been stifling all season long. They have three centers that they could throw, throw at him all night long, too, just to kind of keep him off his feet. So I'm um, not going to go there. And uh, that's it, man. That's really all I got. So I'll be playing a ton of Teague if Wiggins is out. I'll be playing a little Wiggins if Wiggins plays. Probably won't be playing too much Culver. And uh, maybe I'll take a stab on a Kogi if we hear that Wiggins is out and I need to spend some value. But. It's probably going to be more reserved for Baysmore at a similar price tag. Yep. No, it's uh, yeah, it's going to be a wait and see kind of game here. And uh, yeah, no, I was all over that Jeff T call last time. Um, yeah, I mean, when he's starting, he can uh, throw up some big numbers there. His assists are usually pretty crazy when he's uh, in the starting lineup. Oh yeah. Um, on the Lakers side, there. Um, I mean, there's the one guy that's I think is always in play here is LeBron James. Um, and you know, I don't think there's going to be too many people that are going to be giving him much issues and hit the backcourt there. Um, and then the one other guy, obviously, always is Anthony Davis, but he is going to against Carla Towns, who is uh, one of the best centers in the league. So of those two guys there, I'd be more on the James train than I would be on the Davis train this time. Well, what about you? Um, probably on the – I'd be more on the James train than Davis. Uh, you know, you keep looking at Rondo if he uh, – He's also questionable right now with his hamstring injury. He kind of exited the game. So um, keep an eye on him. If he does play, he's kind of, you know, that guy that we just see a little lightning in the bottle, has a big game here and there, great tournament play type guy. If he sits, uh, that's a big boost for Caruso and Caldwell Pope. Um, I think I'd probably prefer Caruso just because I hate Caldwell Pope. I know Coach is a Caldwell Pope guy. Um, He'd probably rather play Caldwell Pope in this situation. Um, And actually one thing I wanted to just kind of, you know, that's actually really all I have, so I don't need to say one more thing. Uh, but just going back to the Minnesota game real quick, you know, thinking about just how big that the Lakers play, um, I wouldn't be shocked to see some sort of like rotation switch a little bit where, uh, you know, Covington's going to be spending a lot of time probably wanting to guard LeBron. He is their best wing and perimeter defender and best defender overall. And knowing that the Lakers like to play big with either JaVale and Howard at center and then Davis at uh, at the four, they're going to have to switch up their lineup probably a little bit and play somebody big alongside of Towns to get away with that. Whether it is Vonley or Jordan Bell, I would expect one of those two guys to kind of see a little bit of extended run. So keep an eye on that. Yeah, no, that's a yeah, good call on that one. Uh, I, I guess I haven't got much from this game. Uh, oh, actually, you no. Know, Bell got 21 minutes last game, so maybe he gets it again. He quietly plays some once in a while. It, and sometimes doesn't do a lot with it, but he plays once in a while. All right, man. Yep, sounds good. I think that's uh, I think that's all I got. Uh, you know, anything else on this uh, on this game before we close out? No, yeah, it's more of a. It's like you said, you gotta wait and see what the news is on it. Um, I mean, yeah, Carl and Towns has that questionable tag, but I doubt that's gonna do anything. I think I'm pretty sure he's gonna be playing. 
All right, man. Well, uh, that's all we got from you guys. I uh, appreciate you guys listening. As always, if you could and you get a chance, please give us a rate and review and a thumbs up wherever, you, wherever you're listening. We're available right now on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, Podbean, all over the place. And we, we seriously appreciate it, guys. I mean, it's what keeps this content free. It allows us to get better at what we're doing. And it allows us to provide better content for you. So uh, whether it's constructive criticism, uh, you just want to tell us we're doing a great job. We appreciate everything. Even when you tell us we stink. Um, I, I think it's fantastic because at the end of the day, it's, it's a, a nice form of feedback and, uh, you know, it's something I like to read because I wouldn't, I, I have, we do a podcast. I mean, if I'm reading you saying that we stink, that still means that we have a podcast, that we're still here. So we, <laughs> we do appreciate it. And, uh, you know, please follow us on Twitter. You can find me at Mike Apatria. That's M I K E A P O T R I A. You can find miles at miles 65, 65. You can get coach. Over at Joe Sarvati, that's J-O-E-S-A-R-V-A-D-I. And you can find Andrew at Language Olympic, L-A-N-G-U-A-G-E-O-L-Y-M-P-I-C. And that is our cast. Uh, any closing thoughts? Uh, as I say, uh, I mean, saying we think is it the nicest form of feedback. I mean, if they threw in a little caveat of maybe what we could do better, that'd be great as well. But uh, <laughs> Yeah, well, you don't always get those, Miles. Sometimes you just get the fat, you know, you, you stink, you suck. There's, there's, uh, that kind of stuff. There's always the haters, right? Yeah, and uh, I mean, we do get a lot of the uh, fix your audio. We do understand that the audio is an issue sometimes. It's just a little yeah. bit of a, a communication thing, the way that we've been recording a little going across the country. Nobody's really near each other on, uh, you know, Miles, you're up there in Canada. We got Coach in Texas. I'm over here on the East Coast. I think Andrew's uh, just on the cusp of uh, of Canada and the United States. So we're, we're, we're a little spread out. So we're working on that, guys. That's the first priority of things that we're going to be addressing. Uh, and we're hoping to have that addressed within the next couple weeks. So thank you for, uh, you know, faithfully listening either way, though. We do appreciate that. Yeah, I much appreciate it, guys, and uh, good luck tomorrow. All right, guys. Take care. This has been a Hoop Bowl presentation.